system vocabulary part so the words and the terminology and the meaning of the terminology the pathology part will comes under here so first word is anorexia so in this word just remind if you add a n or a as prefix then it means absent uh, not there so a or an means absent orexia orexia means hunger in the normal terms it is hunger so in the medical terminology we call it as appetite so anorexia means lack of appetite it may be many reasons so sometimes because of psychological reasons also so the person will not able to feel hunger and if the person is obese or due to some malnutrition in those cases also anorexia will be there and ascites ascites was excessive collection of fluid in the peritoneal cavity so all the abdominal organs are lined by a layer that layer name is peritoneal layer so in that peritoneal cavity some fluid got filled that we call it as ascites and bowel incontinence so some people will lose the control on their bowel movements so they can't control the defecation means they can't control the expulsion of the fecal matter that is bowel incontinence usually the women will be facing this problem more after post after pregnancy we call it as post pregnancy bowel incontinence and usually for the old age people also this problem will be there the next bridge so bridge was the dental appliances attached to replace the missing teeth usually if any front teeth like incisors canines was missing or broken if any tooth was broken they will put the same tooth like dental appliances that we call it as bridge that looks exactly like the tooth so that will be kept mostly to the incisors and canines and cachexia so if, due to any chronic disease if the person is having hypertension from long duration or uh, diabetes from long duration so they usually will be lean because of loss of weight and wasting occurs so this this we call it as cachexia constipation difficulty and infrequent defecation so the meaning of constipation is they are unable to defecate for 2 3 2 to 3 days and their stools or fecal matter will become very hard so it is very hard to defecate for the people so that thing we call it as constipation so the very common medicine uh, the people will use for constipation is banana so usually bananas will prevent the cost constipation will make the stools loose and easy to expel out and crown crown is also an artificial tooth which will be replacing the original crown so usually crown will be made up of gold silver sometimes it may be platinum and next uh, dental caries so dental caries means nothing but decaying of the tooth because of bacterial infection so usually by the time of now also we also will have dental caries sometimes it may be painful and sometimes it is not and dentistry which is the prevention and diagnosis and treatment conditions particularly related to the teeth jaw and mouth and denture denture for the old age people the entire set of the teeth will be replaced with the artificial teeth that we call it as denture and diarrhea which is quite opposite to the constipation so the uh, stools will be watery and frequent so they lose more amount of water and salts from the body so that will be mostly replaced by ors or saline emesis emesis is the medical term used for vomiting gastroenterology which is the diagnosis and treatment of the disease particularly related to the digestive system gastro is stomach enterology enterology means study of intestine study of intestine and stomach which means about the entire digestive system hematocesia so usually uh, in certain cases the blood will be bright red in color so mostly in case of piles we also call it as hemorrhoids the stools will be red in color because of blood and implant so any prosthetic device in the jaw to anchor the tooth we call that prosthetic device as implant internal medicine so if 
we are dealing with internal organs that branch so that branch will comes under internal medicine for example stomach intestines heart lungs will comes under internal medicine jaundice so jaundice is the liver disease which leads to excessive hemolysis means excessive destruction of rbc that leads to release of bilirubin excess amount of bilirubin or the bipigments in the blood so that leads to loh discoloration of the eyes so excessive amount of bilirubin in the urine so these are the cases for the jaundice and melina melina is the dark starry stools usually if the person is consuming iron tablets or iron syrup so they usually will get dark stools and nausea nausea means urge to vomit so for, for certain people they will have the motion sickness motion sickness means if they are going by car or uh, uh, bus sometimes it may be the fast moving train they will have a feeling to get vomit about to get vomit that feeling we call it as nausea so for pregnancy women the nausea is very common in the early months obesity so weight above the healthy levels we call it as obesity or the fat more than the normal fat in the body orthodontics so the correction of problems with tooth alignment ortho means straight dentics means tooth periodontics so treating condition of the gums and area around the tooth means this is periodontics means so nearby the structures of the tooth we are treating polyp polyp was a tumor actually polyp was a small pedicle like tumor which is found in the mucous membrane so the entire digestive system uh, anywhere can we can get a polyp so i'll show you in the picture what is polyp and uh, um with the polyp uh, usually the bleeding will be very common proctology procto means the rectum and anus together we call it as procto so the study of rectum and anus and their pathology we call it as proctology pyrosis when the stomach acid splashing into the esophagus we call it as heartburn due to some uh, kind of gastritis we will feel the heart burn because of the excessive amount of hydrochloric acid in the stomach when the hydrochloric acid will be pushing into the esophagus that we call it as pyrosis and regurgitation which is backward back flow of the stomach and the contents into the mouth so we also call it as vomiting system moment
Okay. Okay, we'll continue. And next, if the ulcer, so the ulcer is present in the mouth region. We also call it as canker source. So cleft palate and cleft lip. So usually, which is a congenital anomaly, it comes from the birth itself. If you can have seen some of the children, very rarely, nowadays it was very rare, the upper lip uh, will have a cut in between the lips. And uh, if it happens in between the lips, then we call it as cleft lip. So there will be missing the connection between the upper lip and the jaw. So that will be failed to fuse in the midline with leaving a gap in the upper lip. That we call it as cleft lip. If there is a gap in the palate, hard palate, then we call it as cleft palate. And herpes labius, so which is uh, due to herpes simplex virus type 1, so the person will get fever, blisters and cold sores. And periodontal disease. So the disease particularly to the supporting structures around the tooth, especially to the gums. And uh, mostly leads to tooth loss. And esophageal varices. So varices means varicose veins. Means the veins will become very weak and tortuous. So easily it will rupture and bleed. So that types of veins, we call it as varicose veins. If that varicose veins present in the esophagus, then we call it as esophageal varis. If the same varicose veins present in the anal region, then we call it as piles or hemorrhoids. So gastroesophageal reflux disease. Usually the acid, the higher concentration of hydrochloric acid from the stomach will flow backward into the esophagus. So, which leads to inflammation and pain. And gastric carcinoma. If you get the word carcinoma, means cancer. Gastric means stomach. So, the cancerous tumor present in the stomach. <laughs> and next, hiatal hernia. I'll show you in the picture. So, this was the stomach. And this part, we call it as diaphragm. So, here you can see, this is diaphragm. So, due to some pressure due to some pressure difference, the stomach will be protruded into the thoracic cavity. So this condition we call it as hernia. If any organ gets protruded to the other region, then we call it as hernia. So this is hiatal hernia. So the stomach is protruding through the diaphragm into the thoracic cavity. And next we also call it as diaphragmatocele. Next peptic ulcer disease. The ulcers are present in the esophagus, stomach, duodenum. So in, in these three regions, if we have ulcers, then we call it as peptic ulcers. Peptic means digestion. So it will be a disorder for the digestion, particularly to the esophagus, stomach and duodenum. Because of the high acids in the stomach leads to this peptic ulcer disease. And it also finally results in the infection. We call it as helicobacter pylori infection. And this here, you can see the picture of peptic ulcer. The ulcer present in the stomach, the ulcer present in the duodenum. And the ulcer will be there in the esophagus. So if there are ulcers in this three region, then we call it as peptic ulcers. This ulcers is due to high concentration of hydrochloric acid will damage the mucous membrane. Anal fistula. Anal fistula is the abnormal pathway from the directly into the rectum. So around the anal opening, there was an abnormal pathway from rectum to anus. So this we call it as anal fistula. This also, which was a serious thing. So they'll remove with surgery. Colorectal carcinoma. Carcinoma means cancer. So the cancer to the colon and rectum. And Corns disease, which is a chronic inflammatory bowel disease, primarily in the ileum and colon. So, which also call it as ileitis, means inflammation of the ileum. Diverticulitis. So, what is diverticulum means? So, usually this is the colon. So, this is the colon. So, in the colon also we have the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon and sigmoid colon. So, there will be an extra outpouching formation. So, this usually this pouch is not there. So, extra like this outpouching formation will take place. So this formation of outpouching, we call it as diverticulum. 
and the formation of the diverticulum we call it as diverticulosis and the inflammation of this diverticulum we call it as diverticulitis and next dysentery so if the diarrhea with mucus and blood severe abdominal pain and fever so this is mainly due to contaminated food and water it also may be because of amebiosis also or tapeworm infection which is which is due to contaminated food and water hemorrhoids the varicose veins in the anal region we call it as hemorrhoids we also call it as piles and ileus severe abdominal pain unable to defecate abdominal distension uh, this is all because of intestinal blockage and inguinal hernia so i already told you hernia means protrusion of the organ from that region to the other region we call it as hernia so here this this region we call it as inguinal region in the inguinal hernia the small intestine will protrude from this inguinal canal through this region to nearby the groin region this we call it as inguinal hernia and into susception if one part of the intestine slips or telescopes into another section there is a picture also this is into susception so this part of intestine slips or telescopes into this part of intestine this we call it as into susception so this into susception leads to intestinal blockage it further leads to ileus and irritable bowel syndrome so the disturbance in the function of intestine the reason was unknown but but the person will get abnormal cramp, abdominal cramping means pain in the abdomen diarrhea constipation we also call it as functional bowel syndrome and polyposis having polyps growing in the colon we call it as polyposis and it also can become cancerous and ulcerative colitis so ulcers formed in the colon so that ulcers leads to inflammation so we also call it as inflammatory bowel disease and valvulus so twisting twisting of the bowel in, into each other we call it as valvulus so this is polyp actually so this polyp outgrowths will be developed in the mucous membrane so this can be seen at any part of the digestive system so sometimes it may become cancerous it will spread to the other regions also there is no known reason but like why the polyp will get form and this we call it as uh, valvulus twisting of the intestine to itself we call it as valvulus this also leads to intestinal obstruction and cholecystitis inflammation of the gall bladder the reason is gall stones means formation of stones in the gall bladder cholelithiasis presence of gall stones so the the symptoms may appear or may not appear cirrhosis we also call it as uh, liver failure or fatty liver because of the excess amount of fat deposition on the liver the liver will not function properly and finally the liver will get fail to function this process this we call it as liver cirrhosis hepatitis so inflammation of the liver because of viral infection hepatitis a hepatitis b hepatitis c hepatitis d we have this viruses and these are the common sites for gallstone formation this red spots are the common places so this is the real picture of the gallstones so this is the gall bladder and these are the stones and coming to the clinical laboratory test we have the two enzymes alanine transaminase aspartate transaminase if there is any suspicion with the liver failure or liver disease then if we go if we take a blood test then in that person blood if this enzymes got increased alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase that means the person is having some type of liver disease fecal occult blood so examining the fecal uh, so feces if for any blood ova and parasites if the person is having any tapeworm infections then they will check the fecal matter for any ova and parasites serum bilirubin so determines the amount of bilirubin in the blood so to to confirm whether the person is having the jaundice or not stool culture 
if the person is having any amebiasis dysentery or uh, tapeworm infection then they will go for a stool culture so to find out what type of bacteria got infected the digestive system and bite wing x ray so this was the x ray taken with biting the x ray they will take the so the person has to bite the x ray film and then they will take the x ray intravenous cholecystography x ray to the gall bladder and bile ducts by injecting the dye and lower gastrointestinal series x ray to the colon and rectum so when uh, injecting by injecting the barium then only they will get the contrast x ray so this we also call it as barium enema means in this they are taking x ray particular to the lower region of the gib and this was the barium enema you can see uh, there was injected barium so with the barium only we can able to see the contrast so you can differentiate between the spine and this uh, large intestine so this is appendix and this is a uh, cecum and this is the colon ascending colon transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon and this is rectum and this is anus and percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography so x ray to the liver and bile ducts after injecting the dye directly into the liver and upper gastrointestinal series in this the x ray was taken to the upper regions of the gib means that is to the esophagus stomach and duodenum so by uh, swallowing the barium so this we also call it as barium swallow and uh, esophago gastro duodenoscopy with the help of the scope instrument so to view inside the esophagus stomach and duodenum endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreatography so means endoscopic with the help of endoscopic instrument retrograde means from back side from the anus so they will examine the hepatic duct common bile duct pancreatic duct everything and colonoscopy visual examination of colon with the help of the instrument colonoscope gastroscopy visual examination of the stomach with the help of the instrument called gastroscope laparoscopy visual examination of the interior of the abdomen with the help of laparoscope sigmoidoscopy visual examination of the sigmoid colon with the help of the instrument called sigmoidoscope and paracentesis if the person is having excessive amount of fluid in the peritoneal region then they will insert a needle to collect that fluid for examination purpose so collecting the fluid by a needle we call it as paracentesis extraction which means removal of the teeth and root canal we all know drilling the pulp of the cavity and to save the partially the tooth if the person is having any dental caries and they will put the artificial crown and gavage so gavage means when uh, placing the liquids directly into the stomach via the tube called nasogastric tube and lavage lavage means washing the stomach with nasogastric tube if the person had any poisoning then lavage is the process to wash the stomach if the person unable to eat the food then gavage is the process to take the fluids and nasogastric in intubation putting a flexible catheter into the nose down to the esophagus into the stomach and total parenteral nutrition when the patient 100% uh, the patient unable to eat the food then they will insert everything to serine this we call it as total parenteral nutrition